Hello, hello, Vijana. It's been long. We've not been able to come to you live, but there is always a beginning. I know we have not talked, so it is in order for me to say Happy New Year, Happy 2023. And we choose to begin at this place on our Youth Junction program. But I want you to know that the content we share on this program is not necessarily meant for the young people. But it's a way of reaching out to the young people, but the content can be used by any age. So, karibu nisana. And uh, I want to begin with a topic that I'm calling Understanding Transitions. Understanding Transitions. I know the young people go through a lot of transitions. The weather seasons bring significant changes of nature, temperature, and human activity. No matter how much we love one season or one particular season, at some point it has to come to an end. At some point, we must get into a new one. Now, just like the weather seasons, we also face changes and transitions in our lives. And as I have said, uh, young people go through a lot of transition and this transition brings in shifts, adjustments and call for a lot of things to be done if we are going to negotiate our future in a better manner that brings in the goody goodies and the opportunity that comes along with those transitions. Now, apparently we tend to use transitions and change interchangeably, but they are totally different. Allow me to quote a guy by the name Ralph Waldo Emerson who says, not in his goals but in his transition is a man great. Let me tell you, transitions are the game changers. They can either make you great, they can either make you a failure, they can either cripple you depending on how you respond to transitions. We have seen a lot of leaders go through a challenging moments because of poor transition, going through a lot of losses because of miscalculations on the emotional response that comes along with transition. Now, as I have said, that our life is full of transitions. These transitions can be physical, they can be spiritual, they can be the change of a job, they can be the getting married, they can be an event-oriented kind of a, a change in our own personal lives that calls for adjustments, that calls for different responses. Now, the Bible is clear. I want you to understand that all our teachings are pegged and anchored on the Word of God. So they may be different because I want to be safe and play within the court, which is my area, the Word of God. Now, Jesus went through different transitions. He went from heaven he came from heaven to earth, you know, from earth to heaven. David's life is full of transition from a shepherd to a king, you know, going through a lot of things again in his own life. Now, the Bible is also very clear of a young man by the name Joseph. Joseph went through a lot of transition in his life. At some point, he was the beloved of the father. At some point, he finds himself being sold out by the brothers to Potiphar and he finds himself serving in Potiphar's house. He at times finds himself as a prisoner and finally finds himself as a prime minister. A lot of transitions in there from the pit to the Potiphar's house to prison to the prime minister's office. All those things are transitions that are taking place. Now, I want to read a scripture uh, that will be able to help us even in understanding transition or knowing God's involvement in every moment and in every season of our change. First Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 13 is my thing. And this is what the Bible says. No temptation regardless of its source has overtaken or enticed you that is common to human experience. Nor is any temptation unusual beyond human resistance. But God is faithful to his word. He is compassionate and he is trustworthy. In other words, with every transition that comes along our way, is it not the loss of a job? Is it a transfer from one city to another? Is it the loss of a wife? Is it the change of a job? Uh, God is 
compassionate. He is trustworthy. He is the God who does not change. Or the gifts that he gives does not, you know, he is a God, let me repeat, you heard it. He is a God that does not change. And in him there is no variance. So it doesn't matter the situation, whether you're down the valley, up the mountains, you've lost a job, you've lost a loved one, you've been promoted. He does not change. He can be trusted. And the Bible keeps on saying that, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist. But along with the temptation, he has in the past, this is where I want to measure on the part B of that scripture. He has in the past and is now, and we will always provide a way out. In other words, what I'm saying, that in every transition, our God will provide a way out. And not only will he provide a way out, but he will give you the divine enablement to be able to ensure the transition without yielding or succumbing to the pressure that comes along with the transition. And he will help you to overcome every situation and every temptation with joy. So, as all, after all he said and done, we need to understand that our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So there is no transition that you cannot be able to handle if you put God at the center of it all. Now, let's see. Uh, what is it that we are talking about transitioning or transition? Because we have said we are understanding transition. And I have said we use these two names interchangeably, change and transition, but they are not the same. So what is it that we call change? Change is a temporal transactional event. In other words, Change is event-oriented. It is situational. It is what happens to you. It is the external factor. You know, it is the graduating from a college. It is graduating from a junior or a senior school. It is graduating from a higher educational level to go to the university. It is the changing of jobs. It is the getting a baby, maybe before marriage or even after marriage. Young people, we are involved in a lot of changes that are taking place in our lives. But I want us to understand that as those changes take place, there is a lot of emotional response that they attract from our own lives. Apparently, most of us do not know the emotional demand that comes up with any situation that brings us into a transition. So, let me describe what is a transition and then we can see where the difference is coming in a transition is a psychological reorientation that has to take place before we regain our sense of stability and performance in other words when a transition comes there is a loss and that's why the writer of that corinthians is saying if you think you stand you need to evaluate yourself anytime a transition takes place you need to ask yourself, what is your stability? What is your ability for performance? Because transition is a reorientation that takes place before we regain our own stability and performance. For example, when you get married, the wedding day is just but an event. Now, becoming a wife and becoming a husband is a transition. There's so much shifting. There's so much adjustment that needs to take place. And that's why we are saying transition is psychological. Uh, it is what happens to you internally. Uh, it is what happens to you after the change occur, after the event takes place. Transition is still in progress until we have psychologically reoriented ourselves on our way of being and in our way of performance. Now, the psychological impact of being someone's wife or someone's husband calls for understanding transition because this must be experiential. The wedding was an event, an event in a particular place, but becoming somebody's wife, it is going to affect your emotions, it's going to affect your mentors, it's going to affect your routine, it's going to affect your relationship, it's going to affect your social connection, and you need to understand them properly if you're going to become 
and Nova Karma, or if you're going to get the best out of every transition that comes in our lives. Now, in managing transitions, every human being experiences the same changes, goes through the same stages, but the responses are totally different depending on the capacity building of each and every individual to handle things as they change or as they transition in life. When we handle transitions negatively, they are potentially able to break us. They are potentially able to bring in a lot of losses. Uh, transitions can be either uh, happy ones or they can be sad transition. Happy changes means happy transitions. Bad changes mean bad transitions. Now, transitions, whether happy or sad, comes with a lot of adjustment and responsibility, as I have been able to say. Now, the youth are in a particular stage of life, which is a period of transition from a dependence on childhood to adulthood independence. Now, this attracts a lot of changes and the being aware of the changes that it comes along with help us master on how are we going to deal with these situations. No wonder today you have a lot of young people who are bitter, you have a lot of young people who have no value for life because the transitions from an early childhood were not done in the right way. So there is an accumulation of an emotional uh, demand regardless of the age of this young person they have not been able to grow concurrently emotionally to be able to handle the capacity that comes along with maturation that comes along with adding the numbers of our age each age span is characterized by different developmental capabilities and in particular they are related to cognitive thinking capacity uh, personal responsibilities personal social factors uh, such as traditions for age traditions for when to get into relationships traditions for when to get married and when all these things are not put into proper perspective we end up going in the wrong direction in matters to do with transition now i want us to understand that age does not guarantee maturity just because you have added an year or two or three it doesn't guarantee maturity these changes in life whether developmental or circumstantial changes in our lives requires a proper transitional approach i know you're asking a lot of questions on matters to do with transition now these are many questions that comes along the journey of life am i really doing the right thing when there is a transition you are like am i really doing the right thing how will my family and my friends react to my new situation will i miss my old friends or will i be overwhelmed by my new situation and decide uh, that i am just not up to its challenges what if i fail what if i succeed what if i lose my job remember transition comes along with fear and anxiety it comes with loss of purpose it comes with loss of identity it comes with the feeling alone and during the times of transition it is possible to lose your friends it is possible to lack a purpose in life it is possible to get confused now the other question people ask is this how do i know that i am going through a transition how do i know that i'm going through a transition number one restlessness you feel less stress you know you start to feel uncomfortable and restless in your current season in your current situation your passion may start to shift your passion may not cooperate with the uh, current job that you are in your passion may not cooperate with the relationship that you are in there is a lot of restlessness the other way to know that you are in a transition there is change of your attention god persistently turns your attention to a new season to a new concentration to a new focus and you feel like you're getting bored by what you're doing at that particular time or you feel like you're getting bored by this particular stage in life and you feel like you want to move to the next level the other thing is that if you want to know that you are in a transition the closing of doors doors keep 
closing, things that you would do with a lot of efficiency, friends that you would be able to relate with a lot of connection, all of a sudden, you feel like there is a disconnect. You feel like doors are closing. You feel like opportunities. You're losing opportunities in life. The other thing is that transition may come with pain. All of a sudden, you start feeling that you're losing a lot of things along your own journey. And it's a painful thing now. As I bring this uh, stream to a close, I want us to address a few things. When you find yourself in a transition, when you find yourself in a transition that has attracted a lot of loss, that has attracted a lot of shifting, that attracts a lot of adjustment in your way of living, there are things that you need to put into factorization. Number one, accept that you are in a transition. Let me say for example, if you are in a relationship and the relationship has broken, just accept. Accept the relationship is over. <laughs> Accept, give a manner. Accept, David, you're watching me. Come on, you're watching me. Just accept that this is 2023. If you have lost your job, stop going back to the same office all the time, checking whether they will recall you back to work. You've lost it. Accept that you are actually in a transition. And like the way Jesus accepted his transitions. When the time of his death came, he said, my time has come and I will let down my life and I will pick it again. Look at Jesus Christ, our perfect example. He was prepared for the transitions that were set by the Father in life for him to be able to go through. He never resisted. You know, when you resist a transition, it's like swimming against the current. You're going to be broken. You're going to lose your life. Accept that you are in a transition. You may be watching me as a single mom or as a single dad and you're there with that baby. You've been left with that baby. The mother is gone. The father is gone. Oh my goodness. Accept that you are in a transition. Accept that you are not together parenting as a couple. You are on your own. Number two, remember you are not alone. In every transition, I want you to be reminded that you are not alone. If all the others will leave you, then there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Are you in a transition of losing a loved one? You have lost your father. You have lost your mother. You have lost a relative. Be encouraged. Be encouraged that you are not alone. Deuteronomy chapter number 31 and verse number 8, the Bible says, the Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Be not afraid. Do not be discouraged. And I have come as a messenger of hope. And this is what I am saying. I don't know how your transition has come into your life. You could be a young person and you have been diagnosed with diabetes. You've been diagnosed with a terminal illness. I want you to be encouraged that the Lord will go before you. He will never forsake you and he will never leave you. Because of his great love, you will not be consumed. And call yourself to mind. Call yourself Kwakamkutano. Lamentation chapter number 3 and verse number 21 to 23. The Bible says, Yet this I call to mind. Therefore, I have hope because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The compassion of our God does not fail. His faithfulness is forever, you know, grounded on his attributes of righteousness. Number three, prepare for any transition if you can. But me and you know that most of transitions do not prepare us. But if you can, Prepare for the transition. Number four, as I finally finish, understand that transitions are seasonal. They are not permanent. Ecclesiastic chapter number three, verse number one, Pastor Dixon Duo says that the young people call this Ekelekele. Chapter number three and verse number one, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Young people, there is a time for everything. There is a time to be crushed. There is a time to be established. 
There is a time to be praised. There is a time to be broken. There is a time to be loved. There is a time to be abandoned. Appreciate. Life is full of seasons. Lamentations chapter number 3 and verse number 21. Yet this I call to mind. Therefore, I have hope. That is what the Bible says. And I think I've been able to read that. Now, finally, understand that every season is pregnant with opportunities. Every season is pregnant with opportunities. The end of a season is the beginning of a new season. It's time to reinvent yourself. It's time to reinvest in yourself. For Joseph, it was time to serve. It was time to learn in Potiphar's house. It was a time to be tested on his faithfulness. It was a time for him to roll up his sleeve, just serve the Potiphar's wives, regardless of his own big dream. He discovered that God's fulfillment of our desires in life takes a process. And in the process, there are lessons to be learned. There are lessons of compassion. There are lessons that God will take us through so that we can be able to serve other people. There are lessons that God will take us through so that we can also grow our intra and interpersonal relationship with each other. For Joseph, it was a time to develop, to develop her talents. For Joseph, it was a time to dream and develop his ability to interpret uh, the dreams, strengthen you are remaining networks if you find yourself in a transition build a new network in every transition there is always something new to learn there are new opportunities there are new networks there are new social connections don't be fixated in your past allow yourself to move forward as you embrace the new thing that god is doing in your life and don't forget to reinvest in your self in all matters to do with transition. May the Lord reach your bless you. What a great joy to minister to the young people. I have a passion for this young generation because I know that our God is a God of generation and we cannot go with the things that God has invested in our lives. We must invest into you young people because the Bible says, I am writing unto you young people because you are strong. There are things you can do that we can never be able to do. But I want you to understand, they can only give God glory when they are done within the demands of scriptures. May the Lord richly bless you. Allow me to pray with you then as you bring this to a halt. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for our young people today. As they go through different physical, uh, emotional transitions in their lives, my Father, I pray that you will help them to build the relevant capacities, oh God, that they can be able to have the right foundation for their years ahead. I pray for young people that are bitter with their parents, bitter with one another because of relationships, bitter, dear Father, uh, with their experiences, perverse young people, King of Glory, that have taken another angle that does not glorify you, my Father. I pray that God you will bring them back to you by the power of your saving grace. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Share this stream with a young person somewhere. Uh, share this stream with a brother, with a sister. Let's encourage one another. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I welcome you to subscribe and send your comments down there. May God richly bless you. Amen and amen.